All right, guys, we are the Super Metal Brothers, and we're here to talk about a special album. Or what can you say about this band? It is Flesh God Apocalypse. They are from Italy, and they are, in fact, the album we talked about before this, uh, The King Denny, is an album we very near and dear to our hearts. We actually really, really recommend that album. Yeah, that one, our top album for 2017. That's right. Not only was, was that one of the best albums of that year, it's probably one of the best albums of the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, we talked about this week about a band called Symphony X, and uh, they released a certain album called Iconoclast, and we felt like that was one of the best albums as well. This year, oh, for, as, as for Symphony X with the symphonic, so more of the um, progressive metal side, we consider these guys to be probably the leaders of the death metal symphonic um, ground. But this album, Valeno, is what we're here to talk about. And um, for us, you know, will it will it be good enough? I mean, like that album, King, it's a lot to live up to. And we weren't expecting this album to really match it. They've had some lineup changes, which always disrupts the psychology and the kind of gel of the band. Um, some bands have actually gone a lot worse, uh, so we were a little nervous as well about that because, uh, and one of those people being the front man on guitars that left, um, and which forced the drummer, one of the best death metal drummers going around to go on the vocals, which means they had to do that. So then it really set up the album to kind of, uh, maybe not fall, but it, we could understand that it wasn't as good as The King uh, going into this album. Yeah, it didn't seem that long. I mean, for an album which we're getting to, it has a lot of orchestration, a lot of instrumental sections, and quite a long album. Mm -hmm. You expect them to take a bit of time. They did a lot of touring and stuff for the King album. You expect it to take a couple of years, but it doesn't seem like that long between drinks, you know? Never mind. So, with the departure of Tommaso Riccardi when he left the band, we replaced by drummer, obviously, Francesco Paolo, and the lead vocals and rhythm guitar. Because I think the drummer, funny enough, was a rhythm guitarist before he got into the drum ah, kit. Geez. He has everything. People like that, right? Yeah, he writes all the songs. This guy's must be awesome, man. Yeah. Jeez. And see, so we've got the guitarist from uh, Fabio Balotelli from uh, Deceptionist. He's joined the band on lead guitar now. So we've had the positions all filled. Now, as we're speaking, the drummer is actually David Fulcito from Stormlord. But is he actually fully in the band? I'm not too sure. So this is going to be interesting to see what happens. And maybe his playing on this album can reflect whether he's got the job or not. Oh, we'll see what happens, I guess. Oh, are you saying it's like a trial run, is it? I'm not sure whether he's not sure if he's fully locked in yet or not, but uh, maybe you guys can tell me more in the comments. So let's start from the very top before we uh, give this thing an overall wrap and, and a bow. The album's obviously Valeno and the uh, track's called Fury. First track, straight off the back, the uh, tone of the guitars, I noticed were a bit more death metal ones, but have far more of a raspier, more chainsaw in tone nature, I guess which I guess adds to more of the production side, which actually separates itself from the King straight away. Well, that's something a guitarist would say, so <laughs> fair enough. Well, there you go. So this thing starts, as the name of the title says, Fury, it is ferocious. Oh, <laughs> it, it is. It is. Um, the riffs hit hard and they hit you large. Mm. I mean, make sure you put the lube on because this thing is not taking any apologies. Oh, so that's with the, the, like, their trademark like Flesh God piano stuff. That's right. Like, quick like um ascending quick like flattering top stuff but yeah. it's very like even because it goes against like the strong guitar scene that's right well. yeah the, the one thing about flesh got apocalypse is what you get is a lot of color now for far be it from me to say that what colors they are and what they do for you but for me the band just managed to amalgamate so many different emotions so many different styles and and that and they make it in such an aggressive nature that it really, it's, I think it really just grabs me from the very get-go. And it's, just, it's impressive, but one thing, like listening to this on an intellectual point, like, wow, it's a lot, they're doing a lot to make it work. But on an emotional standpoint, it just covers you over like just a really nice um, quilt of death metal, if that's even possible. Yeah, it depends if um, death metal makes you go to sleep or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> You've got great, uh, cool breakdown here. Lots of yeah. symphonies going on. The, ingress the aggression and intensity from the entire about uh, from the entire band here is out of control. Um, there's a lot of dark overtones. It's very interesting and very engaging. No, you know, it's never even though it's so brutal at times. I think these guys get a pass because it's never like unaudible. You can hear a lot. Oh, yeah. The guys are doing a lot with what's going on, and you can hear it. You know, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. But they, they do so well, especially in the songs. Well, like the middle, they build instrumentation, add choir, but also the yep. and choir to get that old tension, aggression. Like and a key out. change. So it's all, all going up. It's got everything you need and it's a great way to capture your attention for what what's to come. It's a great track and um, we really look forward to talking about more of the album. So let's do yeah. that, Danny, with Carnivorous Lamb, the second track. Um, the melodic death metal track here, they have a bit of a triumphant 
almost happiness about this track at the start, which is a uh, false sense of security, I guess. But yeah. nevertheless, it was very, um, it worked really well in this context. It actually gave it um, a bit of a story going on here. The drumming is very impressive though. It really does do what Flesh Club was doing back in the day. And um, it just takes those riffs and transforms into something else. You know, these, whatever riffs they are, the drummers always in this band really get to say of how it's going to feel. And um, in this context, it's just brilliant. It's very, very heavy. Yeah, so this song, it yeah, keeps with the heaviness again. Yeah. And it's like amazing. This is like amazing song, right? This one here, yeah. it really has a lot of power, a lot of aggression, a lot of energy. Again, and mixing the choruses. That's right. Quiet. And when a two minute happens, it just gets even more badass. The guitar solo it has no tracking, but it sounds really, really cruel. And then you get some of the coolest riffs you're going to hear in this entire genre coming into it after this guitar solo and even during a little bit after when it comes in. Um, there's amazing instrumentation here and each member is lifting those riffs up even more and uh, more importantly when it comes to the end uh, it is a head bang, it is fist pumping and the double kicks lacing underneath those lovely guitar lines this is one of the best tracks off the album and um, you're right Dane this is just an absolute rip snorter yeah no, definitely right if it goes for that aggression and power and mixing all these things that you, oh. you expect from a Flesh God song all into one again like in quick piano stuff quick um, fluttering stuff to go against like the hard and heavy and slow methods. That's right. Ah, it's just aggressive. With number track number three, we've got the track called Sugar. Now this one hits you in the face yeah. with some crazy <laughs> chromatic <laughs> lines. Um, very dissonant, very unnerving, um, but very interesting and very, very cool to hear. A uh, lot to digest in the verse with the pianos and guitars trading off these lovely dark sinister tones. And the pacing in the song though is very much what I'm here for and what everyone sticks around for with Flesh God Apocalypse. It's organic, but it's very visceral as well. It's like a volcano erupting. Like it is incredibly brutal to look at. It's destroying everything in its way, but there's a certain beauty about looking at it and listening to it. But nevertheless, you are like fully aware what the thing is doing. You know, it's taking lives, it's taking names. And this track does that. Yeah, so I guess this song is always about addiction with sugar it's I guess not name for like heroin or something yeah that so, could be yeah. so I think that they start with the talking I think this whole song is taken through the journey of song gets with addiction going through like the highs and the lows and the attacking and the um, chaos which they go through again that's all reflected with like and the quiet hits coming that's in right so there's even that moments. whole like marching kind of thing push, which is pretty much to your push, death maybe push. and then there's more of that um, this band does nothing in half measures yeah. and this track is definitely one that you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck yeah the Praying Mantis Strategy. With track number four, we get self a bit of a groove going on right here. The verse is going to get you moving to that lovely bass line and uh, slowly get you to some good vibes. Some cheeky little guitar playing as well and the cheeky little bass kicks in the framework to measure. And there's a little bit of talking, which is unusual for the band, but it works in this context as well. Yeah, it's just, I guess, a little bit of breather between the heaviness we've had for the first three songs. It's yeah. just a bit of a kind of I feel instrumental... like this is about as commercial as the band's going to get in their catalogue, and I think it works because, again, and this is why Flash Got Apocalypse is one of the best death metal bands going around right now, is that a lot of death metal bands are out there to sound awesome, but few of them are like Flesh Gold who, who are generally out there to give you an emotional um, experience mm, you know that's fair. Um, and this is what a band does and they don't do it, it it's not a cop out it's not like a ballad or it's not like that it's actually a Flesh God apocalypse song that's going to make you feel sad yeah and it goes into the next song as well so they try to tie it in so these short songs are normally just like yeah preludes to songs it does because actually... I couldn't remember where this song yeah. finished and where Mona Lisa started yeah, but uh, nevertheless, I'm going to talk about like it is one track because we're yeah, going to move on to it. Thing, it really much yeah. is because you get yourself um, those again the bass lines and whatever what we talk at the start of the song. But yeah, there's a very triumphant guitar harmony in this. It's very much like a Lord of the Rings kind of quest in the Mona Lisa. This is operatic singing. Is that what you well, heard? Yeah, that, as well? that pretty much comes into it. Like it's, that's that's the way of changing from the previous yeah. to the song. It, it, I mean, it goes into it, but then straight away it goes into like a whole choir yeah. section, makes it a bit bigger. And, oh, that's the new song, but it's still goes very well and transitions very well you wouldn't pick it unless you actually that's, that's yeah it's like just different yeah it's um the one thing that i want to know about this track is when it all pulls back and there's that melancholy signing piano line and all of a sudden you just get washed away with this waterfall of this barragement of the band and it's it's just a great um experience to have on a metal lab and i think you guys really need to check out this track for that moment when it's just so such a lovely line and all of a sudden the band just kicks in and washes over you and it's um 
oh man, it's just fully immersive. You, you, you can sit there and intellectually go how awesome it is, but when you turn your brain up and just get involved in that, man, nothing's going to beat this, man. It's a great experience to enjoy, I think. Well, in this song, it goes for that whole like building up and breaking down and building up because like the male talking and building up to a big sounding chorus and repeats and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, get a mo guitar solo but then at the end it actually gets very heavy it actually ends very like heavy like damn this is like wow where's this coming from so again Absolutely. they try to take you on a journey on a ride and try to get all your emotions going worship and forget we're 20 minutes into this album now and uh nothing is forever i've got written down and nothing can stop yeah flesh god from being a barrage of noise and the intro perfectly sums up what this contrast of the band's all about um songs so here yeah, i just have this is what I start to realize. Maybe that this album's got something really going for it. There's a certain attention to detail that has this certain track. And I thought that with The King, when they had that whole orchestration in the album, I thought, well, nothing's going to beat that. I mean, they've pretty much gotten the whole orchestra. Rah, rah. But this has even more... It has a little less, but doing more with it. Like, maybe this track... Did you get that point? Which way it starts a little bit different. It's just more thrashy. So yeah. it doesn't actually be more straight. straight. It actually yeah. becomes more of like, oh, it's going to be like a normal like, heavy hard rock song. But then soon goes back into what you expect, strips down a bit, a bit more chorus, and then but then explodes back into a pacey section. Yeah. They can't pace in like a team throughout the whole song. So they, they try to keep the um The chorus and to note though, it has a very goth metal feel to it as well, you know. It's really like you could take this album and put it into a symphonic metal band and all and any genre really. Um, but it's a strong chorus, you know, it works out really well. Um, the song changes pace a little bit, there's a little triply darker feel going on, and it pushes the song even more forward. Um, just really engaging, really interesting. You know, a band could just go back to a blast beat, or whatever. But these guys don't. They're like, nah, let's let's keep driving the song to the next level. You know, yeah. and it makes it a bit different. Like the middle has a breakdown. It has like a carnival feel piano type sound mm-hmm. to it. Again, building it up with male chants and female operatic singing. Yeah. Where they're being up to the chorus, break it down, be up the chorus again. So again, taking on that journey and that ride and trying to take you through a full experience. So, mm. A lot's happening, man. Yep, lots of things. You get the arpeggio sequences from the guitars and pianos and that kind of stuff. A lot of technique, a lot of cool stuff. Really dug it. We'll move on to track seven with absinthe. Um, you get the old big old prank intro. Yeah. Uh, almost like a Viking intro. Yeah, you more know. of a swing feel to it. More yeah. of a swing feel to yeah. it, yeah. Verse displays a lot of different notes, really much a detailed painting going on, displaying amazing technique. Um, you get your tremolo picking from the guitars, and you get palm mutes, and you get open chords, and you get you pull off your hammer ons and stuff, all in a section almost. It's it's ridiculous from a from a guitar uh, work um, with the, seeing it on top to be operatic yet also harsh as well. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's it, again, it's a lot to digest, but it all is seamless and it all organic for the band. Yeah, you hear more of the other singer now, like the um, guy who does all the full set of work and kind of the strong, or no, what he's called. He's more melodic singer he does, but it still has a bit of like a raspiness to his voice. So he becomes more on that, and that that tone is quite good. It goes against the growls, so you get like the deep and the sad. You also get like the intense and aggressive and evil sounding. Yeah, so they work off well with each other. I mean, there's something that a lot happens in this song. It does. Like a seven even... minute song, but so much goes on. In this you even get that um, some interesting lines from the guitarist with a very interesting selection from his tone. I've never heard him do anything like this, but you get this, um, or from the band. It's a very bizarre, clean. Everyone mm. was like a funky in nature with this arpeggio sequence with the pianos and stuff as well. Um, a nice little towel here, dancing through the tones with all the bands, but it's very depressing. It's very, very dark stuff. Um, the band though hits the mark at the end of the song with a tune that could be uh, to a Hollywood blockbuster. It is like hearing a satanic version of the End Game with the Avengers. It's uh, it could be just taken into anything. It just works so well. So much a rush of of power and and um, yeah, just tones. It's great. I thought I thought the way this this track ends it was just brilliant. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, again, there's so much happening. Yeah, I only had a, I've heard a song about three, or four times. Even so, I can't pick it all. It's just so much happening. Again, they, they even do that classical around. thing where they stop the song and you think it's going to end, but then they have the next forty-five seconds at the end of the song to really end it. It's just to give that false sense of security. It's like, oh man, I'm so sad. Oh man, it's even more brilliant. Absolutely great. So moving on to track eight with pissing on the score, melodic and technical from the bands here, moving into serious rock out moments um, with the uh, obviously fresh god apocalypse twist to it. You know. Descending Madness in the verse, it's more badass and more bravery. And the uh, song just keeps driving forward, never misses anything, it just pulverizes everything. You can get some real dark, diminished lines in there as well. Um, great solo, and it's, yeah, it's just like a, almost a little dancey at tone uh, in times, but um, lots of ability to showcase. Yeah, it's like, again, 
loving building up and breaking down. You got to have a mix of piano and guitar solos happening throughout here. Uh, they build up to a big chaotic ending as well. So yeah, again, going through the journeys, all the different instrumentation, like starts with a solo piano. So yeah, again, it takes all of these journeys and all these passages and trying to get a message across and some feelings across yeah the day will be gone uh, this one here is pulled right back at the start it's almost like a dream theater kind of ballad but you know one of those real sad ones you get from the band very progressive in tone um piano is very soft and to the touch and the drums kind of come in with the lusciousness of the female vocal lines here over mm. the top of this chain um she's absolutely moving moving through this song it's ridiculous obviously how great this the singers they choose are but uh, here she can be the high, she can be low, she can have this angelic soft about it and a lot of power as well. Mm. It's a masterclass and a showcase, I guess, um, from, from this vocalist. We had something similar to the, on the King album as well, but that was more that Germany kind of yeah. opera thing. This here seems to be in a little different context. Yeah, but again, this this female song they use is quite amazing. Like, again, booing up crescendoing and stuff. Yeah. And at one part, when it gets to the last chord, she gets very high. And oh. a lot of intensity going. Oh, it's a lot of layering. He gets growly. She gets high. Just more orchestration. And then it breaks down. Yeah. Talking, but then her finishing it off with this thing of more nice, melodic, more like. Yeah. Pleasant. The um the song itself again could really just fit into a modern masterpiece of any movie. You know, it's just such a great moment, and um when it comes home, it really feels a little more simplified just to really hammer home the point, and um it finishes, and you just yeah again I was I was unbelievable. I was I was, I was so surprised the bands um can kind of do that stuff and get away with it, but they just do it. You know. Um, Embrace the Oblivion now. We are on track 10 here and uh, has a sinister opening line, double kicks, and then it goes into an interesting metal corey kind of riff from the guitarist yeah, here. A groove. Like a Black Dahlia kind of murder yeah, a riff yeah. here. The drums don't make it fall into metal core though, so good work from the band here. It's a slower build um, into the sense that uh, it's just a dark, aggressive song. Um, yeah, it's just more focused, I guess, on just, yeah, just craziness, I guess. And I don't have much else to say about the song though. It's very immersive though. Yeah, I think um, there's a double guitar solo in here, which is quite nice. Again, it's a lot of the guitar solos are more emotive. They're not just like technical. I guess it's all about that song is trying to tell a story and stuff. So they use guitar solos to tell you that story. They're not overly technical. Yeah. Um, you got have a bit more double kicks in here, a bit more treble picking at times as well. So yeah, a bit more experimental with the solo as well. So. And uh, for the last track, Danny, we won't worry about the Ramstein cover and the Forsakening. What do you have to say about the last track? Uh, the last track was just that piano thing, Galeno, yep. which is the piano. Yep. So it was just nice. So what's the last, last track? Isn't that their song? That the Forsaking, isn't that? Oh yeah, that was the, the Forsakening, isn't that from another? Um, no, was it? Yeah, Forsakening and reissue of the Ramstein cover. That well, Forsakening uh, is from uh, the Agony album. And uh, Rio's Rio's. Uh, re re oh, well, I guess they just cover. finished on a nice piano so, piece. So, and it finished on a nice piano piece, which, which I guess is for the band's uh, normal. But you really can't tell that piano piece starts. Again, that trades from the last song. Well, that's brilliant. Same last song, then it goes to the last one. Like, you actually can't tell it as a new song beginning. It's all done quite nicely, it transitioned quite well. And uh, with that, we are at the end of the album. Now, is this album, though, as good uh, or better or worse than King? Uh, like we said before at the start of, the, uh, start of this review, King is one of the best albums that we feel um, when it comes to the, the, the genre in particular of heavy metal. It's just one of the best albums I've heard in the last 10 years. We really respect it. It was one of the best albums, obviously, in 2017. We even told the guys from Elysium when we interviewed them how much we loved this album. And they're like, that's fair enough. You know, horses for courses. Danny, though, uh, Velenon, where does this sit as far as um, albums? Uh, I reckon it is better than The King. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah. So the problem is now we have two albums that um, deserve to be oh, noticed. Shit. Um, does it dwarf The King? No, I think it just does. Mm. It does more with less though, if that was even possible. I mean, this band is just innovating with every album they release. But with every album, you just get more badass moments. You get more of everything. You get more symphony you get more stronger presence of emotions, better technique, better musicianship. Um, it does this one yeah, more just heavy riffs and more yeah. more riffage rather yeah. than too much of the um, orchestration. Well, yeah, exactly. Because the other one before the King was really designed, I think, to have as a um, yeah have the orchestra being a real part of a member of the band. But here, it's all about the metal, man. This is just unbelievable. Like like they always are, but for some reason they've become even more enjoyable and even with the, even more chaos at times I feel well yeah I mean just the amount you have to hear these songs a lot to get everything because every even though it might be like the same verse same chorus they will actually add something slightly different to yeah. make it 
slightly different. Yeah. Like they might just on one time he sings, they might do a quick guitar slide to get yeah. change how he brings himself up, and the next time they won't do it. The next time they yeah. do like, a bit of like soft piano work to like show you a quick fluttery or a quick yeah change in a line, but then it won't be there the next time. So all these little nuances and things are chucked in there. You really have to pay attention, but it, it, unless you pay attention, you don't know what's happening, but you. But you know it's happening when you hear it. That's like, right. Something feels different. What is this I'm experiencing? So yeah. that, this album is full of all those things. And, that, yeah. and that's it. Exactly right. You guys need to check out this album. You need to buy it. Um, is this band is one of the best death metal bands going around? No, this band is the best death metal band that exists right now on the earth. Um, we've reviewed a lot of death metal bands. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And um, they are great in what they do, and I think they were, that's what they go out to do. But this band here has done so much for uh, innovation and for songwriting and generally for musicianship in, in general and um they should really be noted for it and they should really be credited and um if anyone came up to me and didn't mention this band as one of the best death metal bands i would be slightly concerned that they're just naming some of their favorite bands yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what a cool kid well, and, I'm, and i'm cool with that you know i've got my thing but i can admit that with nevermore the the style of vocalize or vocals um because it's very much like a it feels like a broadway musical almost with the vocalists against some heavy riffs and for, for some people that's jarring and i can admit that and i'll be like well that's probably not going to be your favorite album but if you're a death metal um fanatic and these guys aren't in your cd player or on your itunes or well, that's gone so uh, <laughs> on, on your spotify or whatever then uh, you're doing yourself a disservice and uh, you really should be checking this album out from start to finish Definitely. and giving us a massive thank you in the comments because you let us listen to this album Yes, and in the words of Flesh God Apocalypse, en route towards the dawn, forever together, green is the pain, green is the drug, we melt like sugar. And with that, we are at the end of our episode. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. If you guys want us to talk about a certain heavy metal album, make sure you head over to the comments and give us a comment on that, give us a like. And until then, uh, I'm Super Metal Brother Matt. And I'm Super Metal Brother Dan. We are the Super Metal Brothers. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. We'll catch you all next week.